Hello, I'm back. Um, okay, so um, it's been um, quite some time. It feels like a long time um, <clears throat> without recording one of these sessions. Um, mostly because, well, you know, life gets in the way and, and sometimes I have time to actually do a little bit of coding, but you definitely need more time to actually record one of these sessions because you need a little bit of quiet uh, there's you know nobody around and um, which is different um, uh, when I'm just coding without recording the session um, so yeah things yeah I couldn't do it um, that doesn't mean that I'm not been working on my uh, my main project current project uh, for the MSX it just an gun map uh, that is going uh, pretty well, I think. Um, so I thought, well, okay, so let's make a short session for today, hopefully short one, um, where I can do a little bit of catch up, trying to explain uh, what are the main changes are and um, where I am with the project at the moment. And then maybe, uh, depends, um, I might trade with a font effect. Uh, try to make a font effect for the intro. There is no intro for now, but there will be one at some point, hopefully. Um, so, <clears throat> what are the main changes? Well, few of them, actually, because, well, last time I was looking at this, um, at the space I had left in the ROM, and um, I, I did a lot of changes regarding uh, <clears throat> about compression and trying to get uh, uh, let me see for example so yeah so I changed the compression now I'm using ZX7 instead of UCL because uh, for this data it looks like it gives me gives me a little bit of an edge a little bit more and also I've been compressing also the uh, the the scripts and sprites and basically things I was not compressing now everything is compressed um, but I, it was not enough I mean I, after that round of, of of trying to find places where I could get some bytes back by using compression I think I got like one kilobyte back which is it's a good number it's quite a lot um, but obviously it was not it was not enough to uh, a space if I wanted to have for example five different stages um, so I decided to move from 32k ROM cartridge to 48 and this is what we look what, what we see here that has changed from previous sessions um, because now I have a distinction of this is what, what I had before that it was just ROM was the page one and two um, and now I have another one another page that is called I call page zero uh, that I'm going to use for data and this is quite special because um, currently I'm using the BIOS for a lot of things and the BIOS is on that page and those 16, 16 uh, kilobytes of 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 ROM, so uh, basically now the cartridge is 48k, and and oh, let's take a look to the. It's probably better. No, it's in build. Let's take a look to the map of the binary now because it's quite interesting how it looks. So, so what I did with um, SDCC is I created a, a page. What I call a page zero, that it starts in in position zero. Interesting, that's a page zero. <laughs> and um, basically, on that page, I plan to put things, data that I'm going to use, uh, but I'm not going to access all the time. For example, see, this is the stuff I have in page zero. Uh, which is stuff that is currently compressed and I need to uncompress into RAM. So what I do is I map 
that page, uh, that memory in the ROM, and and I take out the BIOS. But in order to do that, I have to disable interrupts, and I can't use anything related to the BIOS, which is fine because the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, let's take a look to that code, which is in script, I think. Yeah, okay, so I made a couple of function here so that is a page in and page out. Uh, I use uh, a little bit of as a reference uh, the code from Santi Antonion uh, from his X Racing game, which is amazing stuff. You should read that because it's really good. I made some changes, but the basic idea is the same. Um, so, yeah, I have a page in, page out, and page in with disable interrupts. And then we set the page zero to the slot that we use it for the cartridge. And then, you know, return. And I mean, this stuff has to happen with, has to be done, this change has to be performed with the hardware, not with the BIOS, because we could, I don't know, can we use that when we go? I'm not sure. It probably doesn't work. Um, but what is definitely sure is when you are leaving you want to remove the page zero and put back the BIOS. The BIOS is not there, so you can't really use the BIOS code for that. And there is page out that it basically, what it does is, you know, you go back to, for this code here is jumping, it's using the BIOS, uh, a BIOS service to write into video memory. Um, so yeah, select page, page uh, zero, and then you uh, map into a buffer that is in RAM, and then you know do what you need to do yeah it's page in page out but this happens only when we are preparing the stage uh before the the stage is being played so there's no really you're not going to even notice that i'm doing that i'm talking about many seconds so all right so that allows me to have 16k for data i mean it's not i could be putting code in there but it's probably, it will make me page in and page out quite a lot. So what I thought is, well, just data for now. I mean, I have uh, 7K left at the moment and I have finished already stage one, two and three. So it looks like uh, I'm going to have enough space to have at least two more stages um, with 7K and Probably, I think it's very likely they're going to put the stuff, for example, for the intro here. I don't know. Because in the other part of the ROM, that is the one that is always uh, mapped, uh, I still have 9K. But I need to add uh, more enemies for the two remaining stages. I need to add the final boss for those stages. Um, so this is likely to go down. Um, into stages, um, we'll see how, how, how much I can put in here. And then the RAM, that is 245 bytes left. I'm not going to use more. I think that's going to be very stable. Um, I was trying to update uh, the recording of the demo and I have found that now I don't have space <laughs> because the demo is 300 bytes and I only have 245. So I probably need to fiddle a little bit with the memory in order to record a new version. Oh, just leave the demo that I have currently. Um, so yeah, so this is probably the biggest change so far. Um, I mean, since the last time I recorded a session, that now I'm using a 48K cartridge. Um, uh, loading stuff from cassette is going to be okay, I think, because obviously uh, the game requires 16K of RAM, but only if you're using a cartridge, if you have the ROM. If you don't have the ROM, I need 64K because I need to load from cassette and prepare stuff in memory so it looks exactly the same that it will look when you're running from the cartridge. So the basic idea is that I want the code to work exactly the same. Um, so the, the BIOS will be in the page zero and then instead of mapping in um, ROM, I would map in RAM. Okay, so it should be the same. Currently, it's not 100% working. Apparently, I have some issue 
with the way I'm mapping the 64K on memory and uh, in MSX2 doesn't work. I suspect I know why, but for now I'm not concerned because I will review that later. I mean, we're still quite far away from release, so I still have time anyway. Um, so yeah, that was a big change. So um, now, uh, how to manage this with uh, SDCC was a little bit tricky. So you know that C has CRT0, which is the C runtime, runtime, and um, basically my runtime is almost everything <laughs> straight for what C expects, but I don't use anything from the C libraries anyway. Um, so basically what I do is I set up the memory here and actually this forum, uh, uh, you know, there's a forum post here that I use to understand this, right? Um, and that was a question that Santi Antonion was asking. So without Santi, this game, wouldn't assist actually <laughs> anyway so thank you Sandy you're a great guy anyway so yeah I mean this is very basic was you know it's the header of the cartridge and the certain very things so the only thing that is interesting is I'm defining a new area here in in memory address zero that is uh, pay zero and is absolute address because it's in zero we want it in zero and con Actually, I'm not completion contiguous. I don't remember what it is, but it's basically that. Uh, yeah, you can put things after that anyway. I don't remember, but that's really important. So this thing, what it does is when I'm uh, setting the memory, that this is the main that we use uh, in the cartridge, but we don't run this in the cassette because when we run from we load from cassette. The loader is doing a specific bit for this, which is slightly different because it's not loading from ROM, it's loading from cassette into RAM, so it's not exactly the same. And I think that's the code that is not working in, in MSX2, and uh, I think there's something I'm doing wrong, but yeah, I will look at that later. Anyway, so, so this is as simple as that. Then um, in order for the linker to to put things in the right place uh, and actually that is in generated code I think it is how do I, did I call that stage I can't believe I don't remember okay so no it's in source I uh, actually the script is actually accessing to that right oh it's got slots I can't believe I call it slots. Yes. No, slots is actually the tools to change pages. And is well, I mean, when I was writing this, it kind of felt like it was a good idea, but apparently this is not the right way. Anyway, so uh, so page 0.c uh, .c, this is actually uh, a C module. And with SDCC, you can use this pragma here that you say that this is going to be a segment that is constant and it's called page zero. And and that's it. And the linker knows where it should put this data. And if we go to this file, the only thing it's doing is including the data that I generated for it, which is um, so which is um, generated stage to H so this is the code for the stage 2 and yeah that's basically how it works um, and yeah I think that's probably enough catch up I think uh, so yeah this is table here study construct so this is what is defining the stuff for the different stages this is the code I mean this is just See, I mean, it could optimize this quite a lot in, in assembler, but we don't really need to go fast with this code. What for? I mean, it's going to be run. I mean, I can run the, 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 the game now and you wouldn't notice really that it's, this is happening. 
it could save space, but I would wonder, I would worry about that later. It's the same thing allocating sprites and stuff with my sprite manager and doing all the stuff I do. I don't think, I mean, the important is to move forward and finish the game. And then if I need the space, then I can just worry about that later. So let's take a look to the game. Um, so I have a, a cheat here that I can select the stage. <laughs> I'm not completely sure. I don't think this is going to be in the final game, but anyway, so I think, I'm not sure if this was, oh, actually I'm, I'm, I'm with a cheat, so they can't kill me really, so. Anyway, so um, yeah, I've been I've also been tweaking a little bit the gameplay because you know that uh, well, and also the music is is those this song is new. I don't think I had the song. Totally, I didn't. Anyway, so um, uh, you know that the the main mechanic that I implemented in the game is basically the idea of the chains. When you kill an enemy, uh, there is a counter that basically you have to kill another enemy before that timer goes off. Otherwise you break the chain. And if the chain gets to nine, then you get a power up. That will be a better weapon or, uh, or a Nova Bomb. Um, and basically, if you use the Nova Bomb, you break the chain. Because I think that the Nova Bomb is something that is probably nice when you are in danger and you need to get away. I mean, I'm not... I can't die, so... Anyway, as you can see here, it's quite difficult to get the chains because I'm not really paying attention, I'm talking, but... Usually what you want to do um, is, well, there is a memory component here, so you need to remember uh, where the enemies are going to see. I just missed one before. So, okay, when I was doing the, the level design, I was kind of counting, so there should be um, enough enemies in each wave to get a chain. But you need to wait to kill the enemies, so you have time to move on from one kill to the next one before the timer runs out. So one of the things that I changed is that the 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 main difficulty of this of this stage, I thought it would be uh, that those uh, railgun that you need to fire three times. Um, break the chain because you know you need to shoot them three times and that takes more time but I finally uh, I changed that so even if you don't destroy them just a hit it will give you more time to complete the chain so it's not that difficult anyway and the third stage uh, in introduce uh, yeah I so I, I'm testing a new idea here I see that warning sign on the bottom is telling you when uh, uh, and you know a new wave is coming uh, from behind which I think is kind of cool and it's also more like a type of modern kind of sensibility with a shooter so yeah um, I mean, shoot the maps have a huge component that is memory. So you need to know where the enemies are going to come. So you need to you need to plan ahead and know what is the best uh, order to destroy the enemies. Uh, but one of the things I added to this game uh, is that there's one component that is uh, random kind of, a little bit, which is uh, when the enemies fire. And that, uh, um, you know, it, it, it will make the game a little bit different because you need, not all enemies just fire at the same time. So if I play this stage again, the enemies may not fire in the same at the same time uh, because there's a timer 
and that timer might, might work differently. So, yeah, so I want it to be a memory game, like any shooter, but not completely. So I thought, yeah, if you need to remember, I mean, this stage is three minutes or something long. If you need to remember every place where the enemies come from behind, you're going to be killed a lot, I think. So I thought that that, that one sign was nice. It's not too difficult to implement. And yeah, it looks like a more kind of modern shooter, right? Although it's a classic shooter. Because it's not energy based, it's one hit you're out. And actually, as you can see, I mean, <laughs> because I have the cheat on, otherwise I wouldn't last too long in this stage. Because the tanks that run, uh, they're quite aggressive, I think. Anyway, so also I added more weapons. Uh, I think I mean eight different weapons at the moment, um, which I don't know. It sounds a little bit uh, like a lot because you're not going to get that many chains, um, probably. But I will expect to have. I don't know. It depends. I mean, I've been testing the the stages, and the first stage is quite easy to get chains. So you could get. I say, let's say that you get four chains in a, on average. That means to level up, to weapon level up, because the other two will be novas uh, per stage. So if there are five stages, so it's very late that you're going to get to the highest uh, power, right? So it's kind of okay, I think. Okay, so enough of that. So let's talk about the effect I want to implement uh, for the for the intro so what I want to do is I want to have an effect like it's like a, I mean I'm not sure what, how I'm going to do this but and obviously I didn't plan anything you know that's that's how I roll so um, uh, what I think I want is some sort of fade in um so the i want the text on the font a letter to go from a dark color to you know fading from black into the final color of the font i'm using that at the moment is this yellow white and green but the problem here with the msx is that um, this is pattern based in the table so changing the colors if I change the color of the C it will change the color of all the C's all the C letter that I have on the screen because I, I have I can change the color of one set of the screen I can I can change the color of, of the tile map so when I change the color of, of 1C, all the C's on the screen will change. So what I plan to do is, um, obviously I can't, I can well maybe I could, but it's probably too complicated and it's probably not going to pay off. So, so let's put the box. Oh, that's quite, that's quite fun. Um, <laughs> um, you can do the, use the throttle of, of, of an MSX to actually test the screen and see, you know, all the enemies uh, have, you know, very good aim. If I don't move the ship, you know, all the bullets hit you. Anyway, so what I wanted to do is more like... No, oh, the boss. Okay, so the idea is, the plan to do is, I can't really do a fading of a long test because... Um, well, I could, I probably can. Anyway, so the idea I had is more like um, getting the letter I'm going to put on the screen, uh, copy that tile into a work working tile, um, and then apply a mask, like a tint, right? So it's one single color because at the moment I have multiple colors here and I want a single color. So. Then I put that temporary tile in the place where I expect to have the la the final 
uh, the final tile and then what I will do is on that temporary tile I will change the color so it fades in and then when I get to the to the point where I'm finished with the fading I will place the real tile not the working one so what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to redefine one tile for each uh, character that I'm going to put on the screen so at the end you will see the letters fading one by one um, that I think uh, I mean it's usually nice to have that typewriter uh, kind of effect um, so for the intro I think that could be nice it's not complicated and and it could look really good so so let's see if I have yeah I have an aux here already what do we have here so I have I put text so we can do maybe put text fade in as simple as that um, here so wow, the put text is super simple so it's basically it's going to be similar to this but are we going to do more things so oh look this is my awesome random number generator mm. I think this comes from um, CD IDA compiler the library is is existing I, I don't know it's, it's quite nice it's 16 bit and it's quite fast and it's the polynom it's a good one anyway um so let's go do a um, put text uh, fade in here and it's going to be similar like this one uh, the only thing we need to do is right so we know that the tile set is starting at 92 and I'm subtracting 32 because when I when I do so let's say that I do uh, sometimes this thing why is not doing put in the right place I think I have some sort of plugin that is messing with the with the formatting I think it should be like this I use I need I want four spaces anyway so when you do something like put text right you say on zero zero and then the text is text uh, we only support uppercase so this text is so let's take a look so we're going to do so for example so the ordinal of t or t in text oh man so the t uppercase is 84 but it means a big but in the font I'm using, I start for, from a space for the first printable that is a space. So if I do this and we start a space, the first one will be zero. That's why I'm subtracting 32 because all these characters don't exist in my font. Um, and also I'm using 192 because that's the location, that's the highest place that I can put the font tile set. So, in theory, we can use any any location that is before that. Now, this is a little bit silly because I should have looked at this before. And I'm not sure now if I can. Is the font, font, is the font compressed? Yes, it is, of course. So this is going to be a little bit pain. Mm. Not good. I should have looked at this before, but I didn't. So 
let's see how how far I can get before deciding that it's not okay so I think when we load the game the first, the, you know we load the title for the font somewhere somewhere it says the player no 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 no, no. I mean at this point the, the font is already there because otherwise I'm all uncompressed that's this the player the music the pattern this is main oh it's in draw menu can you believe that yeah so this is the code that is uncompressing the font into the buffer <sighs> okay well we can do that I mean as long as we're not using the buffer for anything else so the buffer um, no go there so the buffer because we have one buffer here where we can store a complete tile set and we use that buffer in a lot of places uh, we have other buffers <laughs> but the one we are going to play with is with that one so I guess what we can do is um, yeah but we don't have the colors ah, that's not good right so okay so we could be uncompressing everything to grab the the data for the next tile we could be doing that but it's going to be a little bit slow do we really care is that important we probably do and I can't uncompress both I think or maybe we can let's see um, so we know that we have 7k here which is a lot that's for the map data hmm okay Mm, we could be using this one. Okay, let's do that. So we can have we can compress the font in the buffer and the font colors. In the other one. How much is that? Yeah. I don't remember. 2k. So we could put everything in, in W map. And we're not using the stage map at this point. So we can do we can compress the font in here and then after that the font color. So in W map we have the font. Okay. Okay, so well, let me find something. Uh, so fun buffer and or W tile power tile maybe. So we can do one hundred ninety two. Yeah, okay, 191, we can use that one, I'm not sure if that's, if that's right, but, so we can use, just in case I change my mind, so phone buffer, double map, and then phone color buffer, uh, no, that would cause trouble. So let's use from from buffer at least. And da 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 da. 
so is the font here? No, we need to include the font. Use this one. Is the font something that we can include like that? Yes, yeah, because I am using the logo, so it would be external. So it's not okay. That's correct. Um. Right, so with this we have the font somewhere, so we can play with it. Then, I mean, we can use the same thing here. So while we have text, and now we need to do a few things. So the first thing we need to do is, first of all, um, if, um well okay so we can do it for everything although if this is space we are not going to do fading from black to black anyway so if it's a space we will need to change a few things but for now let's make let's make it work with uh with everything just just like that so what are we we're going to do now is we know oh, we may need to call okay so we have the font like that and the font colors in the font buffer but then in order to tint the the, the font change the colors we will need to do use another buffer because why not so we will do it at the end, maybe. Okay, so we need to load, first of all, okay, so, okay, so let's load the tile with this one, for example, it's going to be something like this. So, so we know is the font tile font sorry font font wg tile which is probably uppercase Ooh, sorry uppercase this is a constant so ba, 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 and we are going to copy only this one and it's going to be font buffer plus whatever is text isn't it uh, plus 192 no, no 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 because the font is just the beginning minus 32 so we had the adjustment because we are not using ascii we're using just a subset of the font right so this should be copying the font data to the tile we want so this is the working tile we were talking about before right and now we need to copy uh, let me see oh nice so I never remember the order in the buffer we're going to copy the font okay done so and it's going to be eight is that right yes it is so it's font buffer plus 48 oh this one the foreign data it goes into into zero but in the phone colors uh, table is in 2000 uh, hex so we need to take that into account when we do the right VM so what we're doing here is upload the working dial then copy the Oh, 
we go with the intermediate buffer and this is not right because the bump this detects this information is a times yeah so that we should copy the col copy the colors into buffer isn't it and now what we need to do is to think change that and I think how do we do that so we have is that correct well I don't remember right now how the colors work so I know you can have a lines so you can have two colors per row so I don't remember um, so PNG to G to ties <coughs> so the colors is okay so it's four bits per color and you have a lines so you have foreground and background so we know that the background is always which one goes comes first i don't know but the background we know is going to be black so it's likely to be only the other one okay so we're going to need here a thing for example then the, um, So colors and then the thing value. All right, so we will do tint buffer and the color is going to be, for example, I don't know, uh, three. Um, right. So I'm going to use a local variable here because we don't care about speed for this. So for zero to eight <sighs> well I can do auto format, can I? Do you have that? It didn't change anything. So disappointed. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh right so we will have a, a color in here and we need to change that color to be whatever we have in t right so so colors i is going to be whatever it has because we keep that side which is supposed to be black isn't it so i think what we're going to do is just this and if it's the other way around you can change it right so this should be doing the tint which actually this is silly because this could be memset because memset it's basically in colors uh, so t4 <laughs> wait for it and it's a so this is the tint actually so we don't need that and mem set is going to be replaced by whatever 
So this is going to be, you know, but very nice assembler code. And it feels weird for me to use Memset because, you know, I, I was working for six years in a company called Memset. So crazy. Touching the tile, whatever. So we thin the tile, and then we're going to copy. No, that's not what I want. It's more like this. But instead of that, it's going to be 2000 plus font tile 8. And then it's not the font buffer, it's the buffer because we, that's why we're doing the stuff we're doing and so we copy copy the colors and um okay so this is stuff to the tile and blow the color And now what we need to do is, is, is basically this, but not really because instead of putting this tile, what we're going to do is to put the, this font of your tile. Okay, so that should do it. So let's go to main and then break some stuff. For example, let's try to thin this. Well, it's called fading, but it's currently not fading in. It's just in the tint, right? What am I doing now? Oh, because I didn't include the stuff I need right here. So. See new no. colors. What is colors? What I'm calling colors because it's not colors anymore. This is actually buffer because that's where we copy the colors to play with them. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Will it work? Mm, probably not. Will it crash the machine? It looks like we did it. It looks like it's crashing the screen. Oh, okay. Okay, fair enough. It's because we didn't move the text forward. So we'll check for the next character then. Okay. Well, we didn't crash the DMSX. That's a good thing. Let's see. Ooh. Not really. Actually, this is not going to work anyway. Uh, because for one simple reason. Okay, so. So, because. So, wait a second. Wait for, for example, four. And then put it. Yeah, because. What we're doing here is uh, a little bit longer. So we are working with the. So what we're doing is um, putting the work tile, but then we, we we define again the work tile every time. Ah, it's not white four. I thought it was a white four. Ah, oh no, MSS white four. It's part of the library. Is it? Yes, it is. So yeah, we are redefining uh, the word tile every time with every single character. So, it's racing stuff. What? I'm doing it wrong? Okay. Uh, yeah, but we don't need to increment twice, right? So, so we need to change this. And also, we are not going to do this because um, the way the menu works is that we enable the screen <laughs> after everything has been on the screen already. So what we're going to do is go to zero zero, for example, and 
this is a test instead of just index system. Yeah, because we don't see the effect, we just only see the end result. And we were increasing twice, so showing this is a test, um, which is not good because I didn't use the text that is. I mean, if you're watching the video and you see me typing the wrong, the wrong thing, you're probably screaming, but sorry, I can't hear you right now. Let's see. Uh, well. Um, something seems to be happening, although <clears throat> it's not exactly what I wanted. So, let's remove things until we get something working. Hmm. Hmm. What? So font text minus thirty two. So the font buffer is where the font starts. So it means that we're going to write eight bytes. There is that tile. Uh, and the address will be 191, which shows is 8 bytes per tile. So the address of the tile 191 is 191 per 8. Then we copy 8 from font buffer plus whatever is the character of text minus 32. I hope this is not. SDCC doing something funny here. So let's use some parentheses there. And here is kind of the same because we're doing pointer arithmetic, one of the most beautiful things that you can do in C. And then we copy into buffer. Is that correct? Yes, destination. So we copy into buffer. Uh, fun buffer plus this, which is where we uncompress the font colors. Then, <coughs> excuse me. Then we look for. I'm, I have a cold actually. Anyway, so we we look for the character, which is. It would be the same thing we're doing here. Uh, this is wrong, of course, because it's eight times this, right? So let's use the parentheses. It should be fine. Let's let's trust. Let's trust the in the compiler we trust. So let's see if the compiler is doing the right thing. I think it should. Ha ha ha. Excellent. Now, let's see if the tint is doing anything. I'm not completely sure about the tint, to be honest. Yeah, it's working. But now I just realized something really stupid. I mean, if I'm going to replace the colors anyway, why do I need to copy the colors? I don't need to copy the colors. I can use this. And why three? Why three? What? Why three? I thought that three was blue. What? Let's take a look hold, hold, again to <laughs> tools and PNG two tiles. 
how the colors work. I don't remember. That's why you make tools so you don't need to think about that anymore. Just the tools do it for you. So color to views, no, that's not the one. So we get that. And then the color is we find a number. Mm, MSX colors, colors in more than two. So it's the index and move that way. What if it's wrong? What if it's like this? Hmm? I see what happens. Okay, so I was right with the shift, but then I thought that three thought that three oh no it's not actually not RGB so what I'm looking for is probably a different color Ooh. so the colors are not in that in the order I was expecting so let me see if I can start GIMP without breaking anything so we can take a look to the palette. Although the last time I started the game, yeah, it looks like crap. You can't even see the colors. Sorry, I'm going to <laughs> just close that because you can't see it properly. Oh yes, actually three is green. <laughs> and I thought it was dark blue. So this is zero, one, two, three, three, seven, zero, one, two, three, four. So it, it was so close, but at the same time, so far away. Yeah, I probably need to leave that open, even if you don't see it, because I will need to look at the colors later, right? Okay, um, so now there should be some tint in there, I see. Yes. It's kind of working. Not sure if this effect is going to look nice, but we'll see. Okay, so let's have a local variable here because this so let me see let me see the colors so I think we can use let's try four colors why not <laughs> so okay and then we can use something like this here yeah what the it works yes it works anyway so yeah let's we'll try just a few colors and see what happens um maybe this is just a not not a good idea for an effect oh that's not working uh because I need to increment X only once when we finish doing the effect, right? And actually, no. It should be here. Okay. Yeah, because we want uh, to change the color. Actually, uh, <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> This is a, it's not a very good effect, right? Okay, so we're going to use zero, one, two, three, four, so 
four, five, six, seven, seven, sorry, seven, and then we can go potentially, potentially to what? Uh, two and then three. Maybe we can do that. So this is five colors, five colors, and then we can use here tint. Let's see. I mean, maybe it's just a matter of finding the right colors. So it looks nice. <laughs> okay, I mean it's also doing the effect for uh, and uh, and okay super deep D. I probably don't like this, but so something like that and instead of for uh, sorry with two. Ooh, what did I do? Text. Okay. It's not amazing, is it? It's not bad. Maybe it's just finding the colors. Uh, maybe three and then fifteen, and and make it faster. Still five colors. Yes, I see that. Well, it's looking better. I mean, it's quite a lot of work for something that is a little bit. <laughs> I don't want to use the the word, but you can you can imagine which what word I'm talking about. Well, it's not bad, but it's not great either. Yeah, okay. It's not, it's not amazing, but well, I can do a fa fade in and then fade out. That could be maybe that could be okay. Not sure. I mean that would be nice. I mean you can see the fading of the text, and when it finishes, you, it will erase. You know, with uh, the opposite from that too. I don't know. I mean, it, it may be just a matter of finding the right the right colors. Um, it might look better. Um, but I think it is going to be all for today. Um, at the end, I think. Oh, stage four. Working on it. Um, so. So this is just the test code. Well, it's nothing really. I mean, it's just this function. It's just this. It's not too bad. 
I may keep it. I need to think about the colors to see if I can find better colors or maybe, you know, have a line fade in and then when it's finished and fade out, it would be nice to put some sort of, uh, I don't know, some drawing with some tiles uh, uh, related to what I'm talking and then make the line appear, disappear a bit and I can show some text as an introduction for the game you know, why you are uh, fighting with ships and killing things, maybe that could be interesting anyway, I think this is all for today um, I hope you enjoyed the video uh, it's been one hour um, again, not a short one, but it's been interesting, I think. Um, so what is next? I don't know. The problem is that what I'm working at the moment is, I mean, even if I have time to record that session, what I'm working at the moment is a little bit boring because it's basically uh, drawing enemies. I'm not going to record a session of me drawing pixels uh, because that's probably not very interesting. Uh, and then... Um, working on the behaviors, uh, placing things with uh, with uh, with tile. Let's take a look to one of the stages, for example. Okay, stage two. So then placing, what is it gonna be? There you are. So placing things in here. So this is one stage. So, you know, putting the enemies, drawing the stage, then testing, balance, balancing, seeing that, you know, um, I usually the first, uh, the first version of the stage, there's probably too much stuff and I need to remove some, some bits of it because, uh, is probably too much for for the player anyway so that's not it's not the most the most interesting stuff to watch really and the behavior of the enemies is actually quite simple maybe a session when i add in an enemy that has something special or anything special i don't know so um, i mean this game is is the engine is done so it's just keep going finish a couple more stages and um, with a couple of bosses and then and it, the game is done really so we'll see I have other projects I might record a session for a different thing but it's likely that um, there won't be more more a lot of sessions I guess until I finish this game because I would like to finish it and then move to something different so that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you like, remember you can thumbs up and you can subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And um, hope to see you next time. Uh, soon, maybe. Uh, probably not, but there you are. <laughs> Bye.